Hi everyone, it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today for a new tutorial. I am excited to be bringing you a new shaped card tutorial. I have always loved making shaped cards and it's such a fun and unique way to take a large stamp set and turn it into the focal point of your design. Today I'm using the Memory Box Rose Bouquet stamp set and I'll show you how I turned it into a shaped card. So I'm starting off by taking the stamp set and I'm going to place the large floral image into my Misty stamping tool. This is a really big stamp, so you're going to want to make sure you have a large stamping block or a large stamping tool like the Misty, so that way you have the room to work with it because it doesn't fit into the smaller Misties. I'm going to ink this image up with some antique linen distress ink. I'm using distress ink, not distress oxide ink because I want to be able to have a water soluble ink that's going to fade away as I add watercoloring over top. I'm using my Prima and Daniel Smith watercolors to create a beautiful watercolored effect on these images. I'm working in a very slow process. This image took a long time to color, but it was definitely worth it. If you wanted to speed up the coloring process, you could definitely use something such as Copic markers or not get quite as detailed with your coloring as I did. But this is a pretty big image and I got pretty detailed with the coloring, so it did take me quite a bit of time to color. I'm coloring in a fairly loose style. I'm coloring inside the lines, but I'm adding texture as I color. And this is something I talk about frequently. Texture adds detail to your watercoloring without having to feel like you need to make it look realistic. When I'm watercoloring, I'm making sure to leave some harder edges in spots. And I'm adding color down in a more haphazard way, especially when there's a larger image such as the leaves. Because I'm creating that more haphazard coloring and I'm not blending things out perfectly smooth, that's creating texture. And that's going to give my image a more dimensional and lifelike look without having to really focus on adding every line of the leaves and the petals. So this is an easy way to add dimension and something that even a beginner watercolorist can try. As I'm coloring, I'm also making sure to not color areas that are near an area that I just colored because watercolor is wet. And when you get something too close to each other, something that's wet versus another piece that's wet and they're too close, you're going to get some bleeding. And I didn't want bleeding, I wanted to make sure I had the nice hard lines so that I could see the detail of the images. So as I'm coloring, I'm making sure to stay away from areas that I've already touched. So like for instance, when I'm coloring these petals here, I'm being very careful not to color into the next petal because I don't want the colors to bleed. I'm going to finish up things by adding some brown stems in between the flowers. Some of the flowers and leaves had these brown stems and some of them didn't, so I added some in where I felt like they could use them. I also added a few more extra details to some of the flowers, such as some striations, but again, you could have stopped at the first layer. I just like to add a little bit more extra sometimes. So I'm going to finish up the coloring. There's not much more left to do. You can see I just used a bunch of bright and happy colors. You know what's funny is I actually was inspired by the wildflowers that I have around my mailbox. I have a whole bunch of beautiful wildflowers growing around my mailbox and they are so colorful. And so I kind of took inspiration from those for the coloring of these flowers. I'm going to take the coordinating die and I'm going to cut this out of my watercolor paper. I also cut a second piece from watercolor paper so that I can use this as the back side of my card. We're now building our shaped card here. So I have my two pieces and I'm going to bring in my scoring board. So what you're seeing me do now is I'm going to go ahead and take the white piece, the one that's cut from just plain watercolor paper, and I'm going to take my scoring tool and I'm going to score a line across the top half of this flower. Sorry, my cat is crying. He apparently wants to add his voice to the voiceover. All right, so now I'm working on taking my scoring tool and reinforcing those folds. I'm going to fold over those little areas where I had scored my panel and I'm going to use my bone folder to reinforce them so that they have a really nice crease. Using my tape runner, I'll add adhesive to the top half of that piece and that is the adhesive that's going to hold my front panel onto the back. So now we have a fold in our card 
And this will allow the card to stand up. And we have this awesome shape and it's gonna look so cool as a finished card. I added a sentiment from the Simon Says Stamp and CZ Designs Happy Days stamp set. And I'm also going to use some moonshine sequins from Simon Says Stamp with a bit of glossy accents to hold them down. And that's going to create some really nice sparkle to this finished off card. Now the one thing I did not get to show you in this coloring process was I did add some splatters of a iridescent watercolor. And it was just a clear iridescent watercolor. Works really nice for adding just some subtle shimmer. And that's why I decided to add the moonshine sequins as the final finishing touch because that's going to enhance that splatter. And you can see that in the photos here. All right, so that finishes up my tutorial today showing you how to create this beautiful shaped watercolor card using the Rose Bouquet stamp set from Memory Box. I hope that today's video inspired you and that you will try out this technique too because I have so much fun creating these shaped cards and I have a feeling you will too. All right, so if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you don't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for additional inspiration. I will see you again very soon with more to share, but until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!